Most people have experienced traveling by airplane and have inevitably thought about the plane crashing down. Whether this is due to the thousands of ways Hollywood has depicted plane crashes or due to the fact that once in a while a plane will truly crash, it doesn't even matter. If you're flying with the steel birds often and you fear for your safety, just keep watching as we dig into your best chances to survive a plane crash. When the Wright brothers invented the first successful aircraft in 1903, they couldn't have imagined the impact that their invention would have on the world. More than a decade after that, in 1914, the first passenger airline service transported people between St. Petersburg and Tampa, and it kept the route for approximately four months. As the years passed by, there were more and more routes and more and more commercial flights around the world. People saw the benefits that this transportation has, and they were able to reach different continents in a matter of hours, whereas before that, it would take months to sail across the ocean. That is why in present times, traveling by airplane is a very frequent thing. We can't imagine not being able to just hop on a plane and arrive at the wanted vacation destination. Moreover, traveling by airplane is considered to be the safest mode of transport. And if you're wondering how they know that, let us explain. The way that they get these statements about the safety of the transportation mode is basically by comparing the total number of people that lost their lives traveling with each mode of transportation. Now let's talk about statistics. Every year, the US Department of Transportation shares the statistics of the number of fatalities caused by different transportation modes. The year of 2017 apparently broke records. It was stated that last year the number of airline routes was the highest ever, and the number of fatalities the lowest ever. Commercial aviation flew over 4 billion people on 38 million flights, and there was not one single fatality in a scheduled jet airliner. But to be clear on how much it is actually safer to travel by a plane, let's talk about the year of 2015. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation's yearly report, in 2015, car drivers that crashed had a 1 in 114 chance of losing their lives, while the chances of a passenger in the car dying were 1 in 654. In total, 35,092 people died using vehicles as a mode of transportation. When speaking about trains as a mode of transportation, 749 people lost their lives, but up to 60% of those deaths were actually not connected to the traveling itself, but with people crossing the rails at unauthorized places. This makes traveling by train pretty safe too, as long as you keep a safe distance from the rails. Around 700 deaths were connected to transport by boats, but almost 90% of all the casualties were caused by recreational boating and not passenger boats. Titanic happening all over again is very much unlikely. The chances of dying in a plane are around 1 in 9,821. In 2015, there were 444 aviation-related deaths. According to that report, the only mode of transportation safer than a plane is public transport, with less than 30 casualties. But you can't take the public bus to Hawaii, can you? So, why are people scared of planes when they are literally the safest way to go somewhere? We could say that it's up to our perception. When a plane crashes, it's a terrible event that is broadcasted everywhere and it surely catches our attention, causing fear and anxiety that we keep remembering. Even though thousands of people die every day in a car crash, you don't think about that when you're going to the store with your car but boarding a plane does make your mind crawl into some dark territories. According to some studies, people feel more scared and anxious when they're facing involuntary threats compared to situations that are under their perceived control. In 2015, speeding was responsible for 9,557 deaths, but drivers still feel more in control when they are behind the wheel and think that they have the risk under control. However, on the off chance that you might end up in a plane that's about to crash, you better keep watching this video so you have all the information on what you need to do so your chances of survival are maximized. A real life example where a flight attendant survived a plane crash happened in 1972. Vesna Volovic was the lone survivor of the fatal Yugoslav Airlines crash over Czechoslovakia. She passed away in 2016 in Belgrade, Serbia at the age of 66. But what happened in 1972? Let's go back in time when her unique and terrifying story began on January 26th in Copenhagen. She was a part of the Yugoslav Airlines crew and her flight was supposed to go to Belgrade. To make the story even more ironic, initially she was not supposed to be on that flight, but she was covering for another flight attendant who was also named Vesna. After an hour of flying, the plane, a DC-9, blew up over a village in Czechoslovakia called Srpska Kamenis. At that point, it is believed that most of the other passengers ended up being sucked out of the body of the plane with a strong force into temperatures that were sub-freezing. Fortunately for Vesna, she got weighed in by a food cart that knocked her out. 
The plane continued to freefall and witnesses said that it looked like it was raining plane parts and body parts. What helped in the landing were the trees and the snow on the hill. After the crush, the Guinness Book of World Records recognized the fall of the plane as the longest recorded fall without a parachute, saying that the plunge was from a 33,000 feet height. Initially, it was thought that a bomb in a suitcase caused the plane to burst out in flames, but after investigating, two reporters reopened the case in 2009. They came to a conclusion that the plane was shot down by the Czechoslovakian Air Force by mistake. Vesna Volovic was the only person of 28 people that were on board the plane to survive. However, she had lots of injuries. Her skull was fractured, her legs were broken, she had three vertebrae broken, and was temporarily paralyzed. She was also in a coma for a long time and had no memory of what happened. After a year, she started to walk again and she actually wanted her old job back. What happened was she kept working for the airline, but at their offices. She continued to fly with planes without any fear. She didn't believe that luck had anything to do with her survival. This is just one of many stories where people actually live through a plane crash. Even though it is very unlikely, it's not impossible. So what can you do to improve your chances of surviving if you find yourself in Vesna's situation? Let's go over some helpful tips. Choose if you can. Where you sit in the plane plays a role in your chances of survival as well. Even though it was thought that sitting by the wings is the safest due to the plane being the strongest in that part, this has been disputed. A study showed that passengers that are most likely to survive are those who sit in the rear seats. The chances of survival in those seats are 69%, while the people sitting in the wing have 56% chances of surviving. The lowest 49% chances are for the seats at the front of the plane. Also, sitting closer to the escape exit raises your chances even more. Seat belt. Even if it sounds like stupid advice, statistics show that even 58% of people in the US are injured every year during plane turbulence because they ignore this simple instruction. In May 2017, a plane that went from Russia to Thailand hit extreme turbulence. The seatbelt sign light didn't come on, so people weren't wearing their seatbelts. As a result, over 20 people, including three babies, suffered hard injuries. But this is a knife with two ends. Plane crashes revealed that a lot of people died during the crash because they weren't able to unbuckle their belts so they can save themselves. The advice here is to always listen to the instructions and try them out several times before the plane goes up. Oxygen masks. Even a few seconds without oxygen can cause severe mental impairments, and that's the best case scenario. If there is a blast in the cabin and it starts to lose pressure as high as 10 kilometers up in the air, it's very likely that it would cause death. If the masks drop in any case, even if everything looks okay inside of the cabin, put the mask on. It's there for a reason and there might be a danger of destabilizing. Do not try to save up oxygen for later situations and do not try to help others before putting your mask on first. Usually oxygen masks provide up to 20 minutes of oxygen, which should be enough time for the plane to reach a safe altitude. Brace position. There are a lot of people questioning this position that you're advised to do during plane crashes. People go as far as believing that it's advised because during a crash your neck will break easier so the airline company doesn't have to pay for medical bills. This is of course not true. If you put your feet square on the ground, you will reduce the chances of them hitting the seat in front of you and breaking. Running out of a burning plane is much easier to do with legs that are not broken. To prevent your body and head hitting forward, place your forearms and head on the seat in front of you. Do not crawl. Imagine if the plane already crashed and you survived the initial blow. You are still not safe. Fires and explosions might kill you even if you already reach the ground. Even though in normal situations when dealing with fire, you're advised to keep low and crawl in order to avoid the heat and the toxic fumes, here you shouldn't do that. Panicked people might trample over you and injure you even more. The best thing you can do is stand with your mouth and nose covered and try to carefully walk out. Get off the plane. It is a fact that in the majority of plane crashes, it's not the initial impact that kills people, it's the fire that happens afterwards. The most important thing you have to remember is to get off the plane as soon as possible after it crashes. It takes on average 90 seconds for a fire to burn through the aluminum fuselage. That should be your rule. 90 seconds after impact, you need to be out of the plane. Do not stop to take your luggage or belongings because they won't matter if you're dead in a minute. There was a plane crash in 2013 in South Korea where Asiana Airline Flight 214 crashed during the landing. Three people were killed on impact, but 304 managed to survive before the whole plane burst into flames. The 99% survival rate was credited to the fast reactions of the crew and passengers on board. We hope that none of you will ever have to use these tips, but it's always a good idea to be prepared.
If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.